This is a lesson on kinetic theory in the heat and thermodynamics units. We're going to dig in deeper into the fundamental principles of what guides this material. And at a fundamental level, we're looking at molecules. So I need to talk about the idea of systems. A system is a group of objects of interest. And this is particularly useful when you're adding a scalar like energy, like we will be doing for a large number of objects. And by large number, I mean moles of material, lots of molecules. So we're thinking about how we divide up a system. How do we isolate a system of what we're looking at? And what does that mean to isolate a system? So let's look at the difference between what a system is and the rest of the universe. So an isolated system means that you can exchange material and energy within the system only, only within the system. So it isn't in contact of exchanging material or energy with any outside source. You only consider what's inside that container. A closed system is when you look at that container Energy can be transferred, but no matter is transferred. So whatever your N value is, how many ever molecules you start out with, that's going to be a continual value. And this is going to be often the case that we will be working with. An open system means that there's free exchange of energy and matter with whatever surroundings you're in, the universe. So let's look at a system of molecules. The easiest way to study molecular motion is to focus on a single gas molecule. And so we're looking at very, very small things. There's a lot of space between these molecules, and it's a very convenient model based on what we know from physics 1 with energy and velocity for deriving equations. One thing we're going to assume about this, this is going to be a closed system. There's no molecules in or out, but we could have energy in or out. That all of the molecules in here is at a uniform temperature. It's uniform throughout. There's not a cold region and a hot region. There's just a one whole temperature. There's a constant number of molecules. Again, there's no matter in or out of the system and energy can be taken away. We look at gas molecules because they are the simplest case. With fluids and solids, we must consider the attractive forces between the molecules. But with a gas and with plasma too, there's no attractive forces between these molecules and we only have to consider translational kinetic energy and any rotational kinetic energy if you get a little bit more complicated. So what's going on within this gas? The molecules are moving around. So here's the picture from the previous slide. The molecules are moving around and colliding with one another and colliding with the walls of the container. What we can assume and what we know is that there's a range of velocities. Just because this is one whole temperature does not mean all of the molecules in there are at one velocity. And that should make sense to you. Some are going this way and some are going that way. Some are up, some are down, some are right. Some are bouncing off walls. And so we have lots of things going on. They're bouncing into each other and exchanging energy. So there's initial velocities and final velocities, but overall, all of those are going to have an average speed which we can calculate. So because this is one temperature, we're going to have an average speed. Over here we see the Boltzmann distribution with velocity on one end. And I think of this more as speed because it's all positive. Remember velocity is a vector and we would have positive as a negative. So this is a speed and a probability. So if we look in a container and we have a low temperature, which is the red, we're going to have some range of speed for all of the molecules in there. And there's going to be some probable one that if we just pick some random molecule, it's probably going this speed. There's an average, which will be weighted in here. This might be the average speed. And so if the container is hotter, if that substance is hotter, we will see that the probable speed and the average speed are going to be larger. There's more kinetic energy because of those molecules moving. It's going to correspond to a larger temperature. So how do we calculate? How do we relate this velocity and temperature? What we need to consider, because we have a vector quantity that we're trying to average, the average over it is going to be zero if you do the vector quantity. So how do you average something that's zero? We know they're not 
sitting still. We know there's motion. How do you figure that out? Well, this is where the root mean square comes in. And what we're going to do is we're going to take up velocities and square them. So if it's moving in the negative direction, you get a positive sign. So we square all the quantities. We're going to add them up and find the average, the mean of that squared quantity. We'll find the mean of the squared quantity. And then in order to find the value back, we're going to take the square root again. We're going to undo the squaring that we originally did. And this is where we get the term root mean square. We square, take the mean, and then root it. Root mean square. And so you will see this term VRMS, which means root mean square. You're probably wondering, how do you find the average speed? Well, the key here is to look at collisions with a wall. We're focused on interactions here because we can measure a pressure. For instance, if you have a balloon, there's a pressure that you can measure for the pressure difference between inside the balloon and outside the balloon. The pressure is caused because of molecules bouncing off of the container wall exerting a force on that container wall. And we're going to note that that container wall has an area A. We have a pressure, we have a whole volume, we have a force, there's some momentum going on, and invoking the ideal gas law, which I will get to at the end of this unit, we're not there yet, we can derive an equation for energy that relates the velocity of these molecules inside to the temperature and so we get this equation, the average kinetic energy for any one molecule in that container. You relate its RMS speed, 1 half mv squared, which is kinetic energy, that should look familiar, to this term with a temperature in it, 3 halves kT. Okay, we're going to isolate two molecules that are only translating. Okay, when you get into the more proper equation, and I'll put more proper here, and if you study upper division, you will see that we have to consider degrees of freedom. This includes only translation. Notice that, 1 half mv squared, that's only translation. A molecule can also rotate and it can also vibrate but we're not including that now. We're only looking at one-dimensional translating molecules. And you can see that the temperature is related to the velocity. The M in here, we're looking at one molecule, so it's the average molecular mass. There's VRMS. The K in here is the Boltzmann constant. So you could put a little B down here in order to note that it's the Boltzmann constant. The Boltzmann constant has units joules per Kelvin. So when you plug in temperature, or you solve for temperature, you're going to be finding temperature in Kelvin. Please note that. So temperature in Kelvin. With these problems, we're going to be working with a container of molecules. So you will need to multiply by n number of molecules in your container as needed if you sum up all of the molecules and all of the energy in that system. I'm also putting this number here, one mole equals this many objects. If you have to deal with moles, this is the conversion. One mole is just a really large number of objects. There's a history to that in chemistry about how a mole was originally measured. But here's the simple conversion factor in case you need it. The problem I picked out, escaping gravitational potential by being hot, is an example of relating temperature to the velocity of a molecule. The escape velocity from the moon is much smaller than from Earth and is only 2.38 kilometers per second. How would you find that? This is an application of energy and I put that here. There's some potential energy on the surface of the moon given by the gravitational potential energy. We can use the universal gravitational equation here. And there's some kinetic energy. The molecule, whatever gas molecule, has some kinetic energy. When it escapes the gravity of the moon, there will be zero potential energy, right? It's escaped the potential of the moon, so this term is zero. And also, it would just be sitting there. It would just have no energy. It's escaped. It can sit there and not be attracted back to the moon. 
So what happens is you set the potential energy equal to the kinetic energy and you can get this number. I'm not going to do that now, but that's the number. The problem asks at what temperature would a hydrogen molecule, and remember a hydrogen molecule is an H2, have an average velocity equal to the moon's escape velocity. So we want to know if there's if it has the velocity to escape, what temperature does that correspond to? And so our equation relating those two variables is right here. We can find the temperature knowing the RMS. A uh, problem here that we're given is that we're not given the molecular mass, we're given the molar mass. This is the mass of one mole of hydrogen is 2.016 grams. Mass equals 2.016 grams per one mole. Well, I showed you on the previous page, one mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd objects. So that'll be molecules down here, molecules, okay? So when I calculate this, I get the mass to be 3.34765 times 10 to the negative 27th kilograms, which seems about right to me. If I think of the mass of just one proton, remember a hydrogen atom would be two protons, the mass of one proton is 1.67262 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. So if I multiply that by two and then take some energy away from binding energy, uh, we're going to get this mass. So that's the mass we're going to use in our equation up here. Let's do some algebra. I want to solve for T. Uh, I'm going to cancel the two on both sides. Seems a little extraneous. They have a half on both sides and then not use it. So the temperature will equal m vrms squared divided by 3 times the Boltzmann constant. So I can plug values in here. 3.34765 times 10 to the negative 27. That's the mass of one of those molecules. VRMS is 2380 meters per second. I want to put this in SI, so this is meters per second. I'm going to square that term. Don't forget to square it. And I'm going to divide by 3 times the Boltzmann constant, which is 1.38 times 10 to the negative 23rd joules per Kelvin. Remember that we're going to get Kelvin out of this. So when I run this through the calculator, I get... 458.03 Kelvin. If you are interested in how that relates to your everyday temperatures, this is 185 degrees Celsius, so definitely over boiling, and it's 364.78 degrees Fahrenheit, so pretty hot.